morning everybody and thanks for watching so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Jesus Christ being a man and being human because many people um, throughout the pre-existence non pre-existence of Christ debate keep saying that Jesus is a human just like us well Jesus is a human now He's the firstborn of a new humanity, and he was a human, a man, while he was here on earth, but he was not just like us. And that's important to understand. But I'm going to get into that here um, in a little bit. I wanted to just kind of summarize my last video on the immortality of the soul, and that it's very important to understand the way death was viewed in the Old Testament. Um, and throughout the New Testament it's equated to sleep if someone is sleeping then their spirit is not alive somewhere else if they're asleep then they're unconscious if they're asleep then their spirit just like Jesus when he gave up his spirit right before he died that spirit goes back to God it's not conscious in God it goes back to where it came from and the reason we need a body is because when God puts that spirit back in a body then that soul returns that soul has consciousness again so in Job 14:14, 14, 14, the question is asked if a man dies will he live again that sums up the whole belief of what death is death is not living you go back to Ecclesiastes where it says that the dead know nothing the dead know nothing meaning they have no conscious thought they don't know torture in hell they don't know the joys of heaven they don't experience anything they know nothing that's what that phrase means to know nothing means that there's no consciousness I mean everybody that's alive and has consciousness knows something in fact they're thinking all the time but to know nothing means that you do not have that conscious existence but Job 14:14, 14, 14, if a man dies will he live again that's the question it's not accepted that when a man dies he goes somewhere else that's not the question when a man dies where will he go that's not the question posed in Job 14:14. 14, 14. the question posed is if a man dies will he live again and the que and the answer to that question in the Old Testament is no The wicked and the good go to death. They go to Sheol. They go to the unseen. Was it Solomon? I think it was Solomon who said all is vanity. Why? Because everything is leading into death. Into non-existence. There's nothing after that. It would have been nice to be Solomon. I mean, he's the one who had like thousands of wives and concubines. So it must be nice to experience all of that and then say, oh, all is vanity after you get that experience being king and, you know, all of that. But that's a separate note. But that's the mentality of what death was and the hopelessness and the curse of it. And no one was coming out of it until Jesus Christ came to this earth did what he did went to the cross and he entered that death he entered that knowing nothing and he then changes the answer to that question if a man dies will he live again and when God resurrected him from the dead 
Now when you ask that question, if a man dies, will he live again? It is yes. Why? Because Christ Jesus entered into death. And God took him out of it. So that immortality is now given to all humanity, each in their own order. Remember, believers come in first, but they're given belief by God. God is the Savior of all mankind, especially believers. So believers have that special salvation and that they get in early. In Romans chapter 8, they work with Christ to not damn the rest, but save the rest. So those who are not given belief, they will go to judgment. They will miss out on the thousand-year kingdom. They will not be immortal in the new heavens and the new earth. Though at the great white throne judgment, some will pass on to the new earth. Many will go into the lake of fire. But at the end of the ages, Christ abolishes death. So after the lake of fire, after the new heavens and the new earth age, that's when 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 28 completes when God is all in all, when Jesus Christ abolishes death, gives up the kingdom, perfected, completed the salvation of every creature. That's when he passes, when he gives the kingdom to God his Father and then subjects himself or God subjects him so that all is under God and God fills every creature up so that for that creature God is their all. So Christ answers that question when he goes into death. But as one Peter 3.18 says, Christ was dead. He was made alive in spirit. He was vivified in spirit. So if he is vivified or made alive, he wasn't alive before. So that period of time when he entered death, that was the state that Job 14.14 14 asks, will he live again? It wasn't that Christ was living somewhere else. He answered the question of, will someone live again? And if you're going to answer that question, you have to actually enter the death state where people were. And that's what's described in the Old Testament as death is equated to sleep. And will a person live again because they're not alive? So the only way Jesus could answer that is by going into that state and coming out of it by the power of God. So he is made alive. And then, as I mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, that Christ was vivified in spirit. Now, based on Christ's work, he does the same thing for us. It's the very same all that die in Adam are vivified in Christ, made alive. If we're made alive, we weren't alive somewhere else. We weren't in heaven or the fictitious hell. We were dead. If we're made alive, we weren't alive somewhere else. We're made alive because we were dead. We knew nothing. And we would stay in that state of non-existence if Jesus Christ did not do what he did. But he did do it. And he was made alive in spirit. And so he does the same thing for us. He gives that to us so that we are vivified. The very same all that die in Adam, 1 Corinthians 15.22, are the same all that are vivified by Christ's work. Colossians 2.13 says, He vivifies us, this is Christ, He vivifies us together jointly with Him. Not separate from Him. Jesus Christ doesn't vivify or make alive someone separate from what he did meaning that he died and was resurrected and then he sits there 
and has people make decisions on whether they accept Jesus Christ or not. And that determines whether they come with Christ or they're separate from Christ. That's not jointly. That's saving yourself separate from what Christ did. But this verse says he vivifies us together jointly with him. That means when he went into death, we went into death. Romans chapter 6. He was dead, we were dead. He was resurrected, we are resurrected. We are vivified, made alive with Christ in the exact same way through death and resurrection. And we participate with Christ in this. Because of what he did, he drags all humanity with him. Taking the old humanity, the sin, the death. Putting it on, God putting it on him on the cross. Killing him. Christ being dead and then when he's resurrected, that sin and death, that old humanity stayed in the tomb. And now he's the firstborn of a new humanity and he's bringing all of creation into that new humanity, each in their own order. First believers, then after judgment, the rest eventually abolishing death and every creature participating in this vivification based on what Christ did. Alright, so talking um, a little bit on Jesus being a human like us. So scripture does say that Jesus is a man and that he's a human and that is true but there's been a focus on making Jesus like us and I think that's the wrong focus I think what we need to focus on is Jesus's ultimate purpose of making us to be a human like him See, this whole argument is trying to bring Jesus to our status as a human being. Where the goal should be that we should be brought up to the status of the human that Christ Jesus is. And the only way we could get to that status of being a new human like Jesus is if Jesus was not like us in every way and could actually transfer the old humanity take care of that and bring to us the new humanity that is something we cannot do so we are not exactly like Jesus Jesus was not exactly like us first Jesus had no sin And we sin. Why? Because we're dying. Romans chapter 5. We're born into death. We inherit death from Adam. And because we are dying, we sin. Adam was the only one who sinned and then began to die. We are born into death before we even sin. That's why little babies can die in the womb. That's why animals die. That's why babies before they can even make a conscious decision can die because we inherit death not sin we inherit death but because we're dying on that we sin so Jesus Christ had no sin that means that he didn't have the same death operating in us that we do so how could we say that Jesus was just like us Think of how sin and death is such a huge part of our lives. It drives everything. It's had a tremendous effect on us, hasn't it? Well, Jesus had no sin. So in order to become 
a new creation, in order to become the firstborn of a new creation, which Jesus was, he had to be different than what we are. I'm not saying he wasn't human, that he wasn't a man. Nobody's saying that. But to say that he was exactly like us is trying to get Jesus down to our level and not understanding that Jesus is bringing us up to his level as a human. So this thought is trying to make Jesus a man like us. But Jesus is making us a man like him. The goal is the new humanity. And Jesus could only do that if he was different from us and that he had no sin. 1 Peter 3.18 as well, I'm going back to this verse, it says the just, this is talking about Jesus, how he saves us, the just for the sake of the unjust. Let me go to that first. I'll read the whole thing. 1 Peter 3.18. That he may be leading us to God, being put to death in deed and flesh, yet vivified in spirit, in which, being gone to the spirits in jail, he heralds also. That's not the verse I wanted. Um, yeah, up upstairs a little bit here. Christ also for our sake. This is still 18. I just read the bottom part of it. I went to 19. Christ also for our sakes, once died concerning sins. The just for the sake of the unjust. The just for the sake of the unjust. See, we're not just. Christ took care of sin because he was just. Christ was just. He died for the unjust. We are not just. In fact, Romans 3.11 says there is no one just no one righteous not one so how can Jesus be exactly like us except for the fact that he's just and we are not that's a, a big difference and that's the basis behind the whole being that qualified Jesus Christ to be able to to destroy the old humanity and become the new humanity. That's what gives Jesus Christ the ability to give that new humanity to all of creation. To every man, woman, and child. So how can this question, or how can this comment be made that Jesus was exactly like us. Jesus was exactly like us in that he was a man that had no sin, and that was just, and could lay down his life. That's a big difference. And it's the difference that qualified him to make us. See, we shouldn't focus, people who make this comment, we shouldn't focus on making Jesus a man like us. We should focus on the man Jesus was and how he was different from us and how he was the same with us. But we should focus on the man that Jesus Christ is making us. Because that's the new man. And he could only do that because he had no sin and he was just. And he entered death. In order to shake off the old humanity. To shake off sin and death. To be resurrected. So that everyone who dies will one day be resurrected.
We were not capable of becoming a new human. Jesus was. Because of the man he was. Now the book of Enoch, I know it's not scripture, but I think there's many things we can learn from these apocryphal books. And I don't doubt that the book of Enoch is true. But again, I know it's not scripture. I just wanted to go over a few verses in the book of Enoch that I think makes sense. Enoch 46, starting in verse 1, it says, And there I, this is Enoch having a vision in heaven. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And another being, okay, so this is God, white like wool. And another being, now of course we know that this was a vision, and I, I don't, and I'm not pretending to be an expert on the three books of Enoch and what he saw. But he saw visions. He was transported to heaven. What he saw in a vision or what was real. You know, how to put all that together, I'm not sure. But in these words, he distinguishes between God and Jesus. And that's what I wanted to focus in on. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And another being, this is talking about Jesus, and another being was with him, whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy messengers. And I asked the messenger who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning the Son of Man, who he was, and from where he was, why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said to me, This is the Son of Man who has righteousness, with whom dwells righteousness, and who reveals all the treasures of that which is hidden, because of the Lord of Spirits has chosen him, and whose lot was the Preeminence before preeminence before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness forever. So we're talking about God and Jesus here, how Jesus was a being, the Son of Man, and he was righteousness. This does not conflict with Scripture that says that Jesus was just, and we are unjust, because Jesus Christ is God's righteousness. So everything that Jesus Christ does can be attributed to the Father. Like the horrible comment made that we can't worship Jesus because he's not God. That's ridiculous. Because Jesus is just. He's the justness of God. He's the righteousness of God. And this is Enoch, but scripture teaches the exact same thing. So that what you do to Jesus, you do to God. If you worship Jesus, you are worshiping God. They are so closely related because Jesus is God's righteousness. He wasn't a man like us because he had no sin. He was just. He was a man that could put all this on him the old humanity, sin and death, in order to become and bring all creation to that new creation. That's something that's very distinct from what we are. But because of that, Christ is bringing us up to being the man that he is. The new man, the new humanity. The focus isn't on making Jesus a man like us. In um, 
Enoch 71, verse 14, this is kind of reiterated too. This is the Son of Man who is born to righteousness, and righteousness abides over him. And the righteousness of the head of days does not forsake him. So I bring these, just a few verses up in Enoch, just because it plainly states that Jesus is God's righteousness. And that's supported in Scripture. So Jesus had to be God's righteousness. He had to be just. He had to have no sin, which is very different from what we are, in order to take all that we are, our sin, our old humanity, our death, and do away with it so that he can bring all creation up to that new creation. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.